Hi there. Uh, welcome to another live demonstration of setting up a strategy as suggested by one of the channel subscribers. In this case, we're going to go with this one uh, suggested by Match You See, and you'll see it's a correct score strategy and by backing the 0 1 and the 1 0 and a lay of the 0 0 score at the same time. And as you can see, he's hoping that two winners take away the loss from the other. Now, I, as a non football trader, have my reservations about this particular strategy. Uh, a couple of things, really. Uh, first of all, a lay of the nil-nil will automatically put you against the market. As soon as the game starts, that, that uh, particular scoreline, the odds will start to drop, and they will continue to drop as long as there's no goal. In the meantime, the odds on the 1-0 nil and the 0-1 nil will stay relatively stable, I would think. Uh, football traders amongst you can correct me otherwise, but I think they may actually come in a little bit as we approach half time, but then of course after the second half with still no goal scored, they will continue to drip. But my main concern here is that um, for the nil-nil lay to be successful, you need a goal. And from that point of view, therefore, I'm not convinced it's a sensible tactic to use. You might as well use the money you have on the lay of the nil-nil and put on the nil-one, one-nil Dutch. Or alternatively, not bother with the one-nil, nil-one Dutch. That's the first uh, caveat that I have to flag up. The second one is the lay of nil-nil is going to be done at higher odds. You can see here I've got the West Ham-Chelsea match listed. Uh, which starts in about half an hour, and it's sitting at a lay at uh, of 11. Uh, so the odds uh, are quite high, and therefore your liability is going to be quite high. Uh, so those reservations aside, we'll still go with it, but I'm going to put a little twist on it. I'm not going to lay the nil-nil at the off. Instead, I'm going to set up so that we drip feed money into that particular scoreline. So the odds will come down over time, assuming no goal. And if there is an early goal, it means that some of those little lays that we've been putting in won't be matched. So automatically, your liability effectively will be reduced uh, because you simply haven't put those bets into the market. Um, the next decision that you need to make is, is how much money you're going to put in and how you're going to split it across those score lines. So the plan here is, as a first stab, I'll just take 50-50. So I'm going to assume an overall liability of £100. Uh, we'll stick £50 as a liability on the nil-nil, and we'll drip feed that into the market. And we'll have £50 on a Dutch of the one nil and nil one score lines. Um, which will be put in just before kickoff. So let's start uh, setting that up. Um, so if we open up the strategy editor, we'll just set off and from the start, create a new strategy, the usual story, rename it and give it a name. So uh, well, again, we'll call that demo. So yes, nil nil lay one nil and nil one Dutch. So again, when you're renaming these things, you should give them sensible names so that you can quickly identify them when you're going to be using them. So you save that. I'll now be why are you complaining at me? There we go. Okay, we'll add in the rules. So the first thing we'll do is the Dutch off the back of the uh, nil one and one nil. So that's a pretty straightforward 
process again rename this so Dutch nil one and one nil. Relative to start time, we'll do that uh, 10 seconds before the start of the, the match. The action is going to be a Dutch. Now, if we keep this sorted by Betfair row and ascending, it's easy enough to establish the indices. Now, if I just save that for the minute. So I can move this out of the way. Okay, we're looking at nil one and one nil. So that's indices one, so two, three, four, five. So that's two and five. The thing to note, of course, about the correct score markets is that those correct scores are always listed in exactly the same order. So they're always going to be the same irrespective of which match you're looking at. We'll take the best back odds and we'll keep those just in case they don't get matched, but it should be matched okay if we take the best back odds. Conditions, make sure we are not in play. Uh, so the market in play should be not in play. We might as well do a vol market volume one. Um, let's just put it down. We're in the correct score market. So let's make sure it's greater than 20,000. Again, these are just figures off my head. The more experienced football traders amongst you will probably have a better idea of what these numbers should be. Uh, I didn't specify a stake size, did I? Fixed amount should be £50. Again, we're going to use a, a basic liability of, of £100 overall, and we're splitting it 50-50 between the 1-0-0-1 the, the, uh, one -nil -nil -one Dutch and the 0-0 lay. So that's an easy enough one to implement. The more interesting one will be the lay of nil-nil. So this is going to be a drip fed lay of nil-nil. Now what we're wanting to do here is actually not have this go in until the match is underway. And let's first of all stick the first one in five minutes after we've gone in play. Now here's the thing that we're going to do here. Uh, we're not going to put in the £50 liability. We are, this is going to be a bet, place a bet. This is going to be on the bet for row one. In other words, the nil-nil score line. You could, in this particular case, choose by name and choose nil-nil. If you wanted to, we're going to do a lay bet. The fixed odds we're not going to use. We're going to use the current uh, best lay odds. And the bet size is going to be, so let's, let's put in five bets. So those are going to be lays of £10 liability each, assuming they all go in. So the lay stake is going to be a liability. So that if all five are taken, that will be a liability of £50 added to the £50 stake on the Dutch to give us a total liability of 100 However, keep in mind that not all of these little bets of £10 liability will actually be taken if there's a goal within the first half hour. Okay, the conditions, we want this to be in play. And I think that's it. Again, uh, we can have our volume there. You could, you probably guess it. When you start having the same check for conditions in there, 
think about having a global condition that you may have seen me do in numerous videos over the months. Um, for the purposes of this particular strategy, we'll just stick it in here. So that's going to be the market volume. And again, we'll set that to 20,000. I mean, what you could do if you want to get quite sophisticated is rather than a market volume, you could have a selection volume. So you would only get involved on that particular event outcome if its volume was a certain amount. But we'll just stick to the market volume in this particular case. And we can save that. So there's our two bets, if you will. Um, but what we need to do is configure that because at the moment, it's only going to stick in one £10 liability lay. We need to do that five times. And this is where you can use the execution count option. Change that to five. And we're going to change that to perhaps every five seconds. Uh, sorry, not five seconds, a bigger pardon, five minutes. So that's 300 seconds. And because we're going to start at five minutes in, what will happen is the match will be underway. And in the fifth minute, the first one will go in. Another five minutes later, the next one will go in. And again, five minutes intervals will ultimately get five bets going in, assuming there isn't a goal. Now, if we assume there isn't a goal, that means that our total liability for the lay of 0, zero will still be £50. Pounds. It just means that we will be getting better odds as the match progresses. Now, again, the football traders amongst you may want to think about um, increasing these gaps and starting a little bit later. Uh, that will get you lower odds still. And keep in mind that if a goal comes before all these steps have been taken, so for example, imagine three of them have been put into the market and uh, then there's a goal. Obviously, you'll have £30 liability, but the other two won't go in. Okay, well, in actual fact, they will, but the odds will be at 1,000. So that's another thing that we need to check. We need to check that there hasn't been a goal. Okay, so we can use that by simply choosing football number of goals is equal to zero. So in other words, as long as there's no goals, we're okay. So this one will loop around five times. If there's been a goal in the interim, the subsequent bets or lays will not be placed. Now, the next thing we want to do is here, green out on a goal. We did another rule that will green up after a goal. So this will be a relative to in play time so this is going to start zero minutes after it comes in play so as soon as the, the referee blows the whistle this rule will start monitoring the market for the goal and we want to green up all selections and the conditions again we will check that we're in play we also need to check the market unsuspend time. And the reason for that, of course, is that once the market is suspended for the goal, it ultimately becomes unsuspended, but the market takes a while to settle down. Now, again, you may need to adjust this figure. I'm going to set it to a minute, but it may need to be longer than that. Um, yeah, so let's just set it to two. But again, the football traders among you may have a better idea. In the meantime, of course, a second goal could be scored here, in which case this rule will never fire or won't be able to fire because your nil one and your one nil bets, those outcomes are impossible anyway. 
Uh, so you will lose all of your stake in that particular case. And we also need to check that an actual goal has indeed been scored. So we need to check that this is uh, greater than zero. That's fine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is essentially it. So just quickly check that all of the things are okay. And uh, we'll assign this in simulation mode to the West Ham match, which is going to start in about 20 minutes. And I'll come back to the video as and when something exciting happens. Sorry, I've just realized I made a, a slight mistake there. This one here shouldn't be relative to in, uh, event start time. It should be relative to in play time. Beg your pardon. My mistook. There we go. Okay, so I'll come back once uh, something happens. Okay, coming up to the start of the game, we should see our Dutch going in very shortly on the 0-1 and 1-0 score lines. And that should kick in 10 seconds out from the kickoff. Just uh, to confirm that that goes in, and then we'll uh, wait for the match to go in play. So there you are, £50 liability, as you can see, for a return, if either of those were to go on and win, of £193 after commission. Okay, so we just need to wait for this game to start. Uh, so I'll come back just before the five minute into the game part where we should see the first of the lays going in. Okay, we're coming up to the five minute mark for our first lay going in. And you can see that the nil nil score line has only come down a slight uh, way in terms of odds. I think about a tick. Uh, the nil one has come in a bit and the 1-0 has gone out a bit. I should flag up, of course, excuse me, <clears throat> I should flag up that the I've made no attempt to make any, even a guess, as to whether this match is particularly good for this strategy or not. It was simply picked because that was the next big game in line when I started doing the video, that's all. Uh, so there you see our first lay going in. Uh, so it was taken at 10.5 as opposed to the option that was available at the start, which I think was 11 or 11.5, if memory serves me correctly. And then you can see that we end up with a stake of only £1.5p. Um, again, we'll see how this match progresses. But the football traders amongst you may want to think about delaying the nil-nil lays going in still further so that the odds are that much lower. Um, keep in mind, of course, uh, if there's an early goal and there's no nil-nil lays taken, uh, you won't get any profit on that particular outcome, which will reduce the overall stake. Having said that, of course, if there's an early goal and your lays aren't taken, your overall stake for the match is reduced in any case, because effectively you're not getting involved in the nil-nil. So six of one and half a dozen of the other. Um, in terms of the automation side of things, it's exactly the same. You just need to, to decide what settings to use, when to enter the market on nil-nil, how much money to go on the nil-nil, and how much money to go on the Dutch uh, for your overall liability. Um, so again, we'll just uh, pause the video and let's see the next one coming in and uh, see how we're getting on at that stage. Okay, now we have a suspended market uh, and that's twice it's suspended for just a couple of seconds. Now we're coming up to the 10 minute mark, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Because clearly after those suspensions, the market takes time to settle down again. So you can see that the odds for the nil nil have still come in, uh, the odds for nil one have come in, and the odds for the one nil are just a little bit higher than they were when we entered at 11. 
So the second lay should be entering the market any second now. There we go. Okay, so our overall liability uh, on the nil-nil is now nearly £70. But you'll see the liability on all the other results has reduced a little. And the thing to note is with those phantom suspensions is that the market gets upset and takes a wee while for it to settle down. So if one of those drip-fed bets happens to hit the market at that time when, those, when the market's all over the place, you may get funny lays going in, uh, which is another thing you need to be aware of. Okay, I'm just going to leave it there for the moment and we'll come back later in the match to see how things are going. Okay, folks, it looks like Chelsea have scored in the 16th minute um, and we had a total of three lays put in on the 0, zero. If I remove the average odds, you can see the three bets there at 10.5, 9.4 and 8.6 respectively and a relatively small stake that reduces our overall liability on the other scores from 50 to 46 pounds. So that's the first thing to note. Now we've had a goal, so hopefully the green up all option will be kicking in, but because the market's still taking a wee bit of time to settle down, we see the one nil is impossible now. And so in all likelihood, we're going to end up with a loss. We were setting up profit. If you were to green up before the goal, you were looking at a profit of approximately six pounds, seven pounds on the stakes that had already been taken. So you can see here the goal for Chelsea has gone in. The market is expecting that Chelsea are likely to go and score again. So you can see there the lays that we put in because we split the overall stake. 50-50, so we, we would ultimately wind up with a £50 liability on 0, zero if all of our little drip-fed bets had been taken. Doesn't impact the overall liability that much on the other scores. That's the green-up option going in, I suspect. Yep, there's us greened up. So you'll see that we're going to wind up with a liability of, uh, depending on which, what the end score is, of £17. Okay, so as I was saying, r rather than splitting 50-50, you might want to actually weigh everything up more on the fa in the favour of the nil-nil scoreline. So you might want to go to something like a 75-25% split. Um, in addition to that, you may actually also want to delay the lays going in still further rather than entering the first one at five minutes into the match where the lay odds hadn't really changed that much on the nil-nil scoreline. So you may want to wait till at least 20 minutes into the first half before you start looking at entering the market. But Anyway, that's my take on Match UC's suggested strategy. Uh, it needs more work, I would suggest. Um, certainly playing around with the data in, uh, the um, market entry points and the stakes used. One other thing I should flag up to you is that I don't have an option. I never created an option for greening up if it's still nil-nil later on in the match, because you'd be looking at a full, <coughs> excuse me, you'd be looking at a full stake loss in that event. So you may need to have some sort of get out point, let's say on the 70th minute mark, if it was still nil-nil. Again, I'll leave that for the football traders to play with um, and we'll just leave it there, I think. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.